civil rights movement. In the South, people were particularly divided by the issue. Some agreed with desegregation and giving rights to blacks, while others vehemently disagreed. Those that disagreed had reasons ranging from this is the Southern way of life to racist ideals. While the South as a whole was reeling from all of this, the Southern Jewish community was stuck in a difficult spot. Many of them had trouble being able to speak out because it could jeopardize their lives, their homes, and their jobs. If they were merchants, they ran the risk of their stores being boycotted. It was a very difficult time and many Jews stayed silent so as not to implicate themselves or family members. During this difficult time, there were rabbis who stood tall. One such rabbi was Rabbi Perry Nussbaum of Jackson, Mississippi. At Beth Israel Congregation, he sometimes received pushback from his congregants, but he still stayed true to who he was, what his role as a rabbi was, and what the role of a Jew was, no matter what. Sometimes, however, his congregants decided to speak up. I have two things that I would like to show you today. The first is an article written in American Judaism, a publication issued by the UAHC. The article was written by Jesse Zellory, an American correspondent for the Jerusalem Post and managing editor of Hadassah Magazine, and is entitled Kol Nidre in Mississippi. The second document I will be sharing with you is a letter from Dr. Paul Ellen, a resident of Jackson, Mississippi, which I found in Rabbi Nussbaum's personal collection at the American Jewish Archives in Cincinnati, Ohio. The letter is directed toward the editor of American Judaism in response to Zell Lurie's article in the winter edition of 1964 to 1965. In the article itself, Zell Lurie recounts his experience of visiting Rabbi Nussbaum's synagogue in Jackson, Mississippi for Kol Nidre, the actual experience he had there, and what he did afterwards. The article was only a page long, but raised some eyebrows, and not only those of Paul Ellen. In Zell Lurie's article, he speaks of his fears of a hostile reception in Jackson, which were based on what he had read and heard about Mississippi. He does say that his fears, his doubts about Mississippi and its Jews were somewhat dispelled after a few hours in Jackson. This, however, does not placate Paul Ellen. Although he seemed to be favorably impressed with what he saw of Jackson Jewish life, Mr. Zelluri's enlightenment is of little importance when one considers some of the things which impressed him during his visit. In terms of Zelluri's concerns about being welcomed, Ellen says, I doubt seriously whether any Jew has ever been unwelcome in a Jewish house of worship because of his social or political beliefs. While Zellory implied that some of the visitors were not welcomed into the community by being stared at by members of the congregation, Dr. Allen allows us to understand the reality of the situation. Zellory neglected to mention that the behavior of one of the visitors caused a disturbance which disrupted the decorum of the services. One was clipping his fingernails with such vigor that the people in the rear rows of the congregation looked to see whether a cricket was in the hall. This shows that the congregants were not looking at the visitors because they were not welcome, but the congregants were showing their disgust. In terms of Rabbi Nussbaum's sermon that was also mentioned in Zell Lurie's article, which he did not speak so highly of, Dr. Allen really let Zell Lurie know what he thought about his comments. Consider, too, Mr. Zell Lurie's surprise that the Kol Nidre sermon dealt with love of all races. This is a fundamental tenet of Judaism and certainly an appropriate topic for a rabbi, regardless of whether he is preaching in Jackson, Mississippi, or Chicago. One of the visitors even stated that the rabbi was afraid to stand up and be counted. Despite pressures from within our own congregation, it is a matter of record that the people of Jackson and the state of Mississippi know precisely and unequivocally where Rabbi Nussbaum stands with respect to the functional significance of the concept of the brotherhood of man. Not only did this man, Dr. Paul Ellen, find it incredibly important to comment on an article which offended him as a resident of Mississippi, a Jew in Mississippi, and a member of Beth Israel Congregation, but he wanted to stand up for those beliefs and call out Jesse Zelluria and the UAHC for printing the article. It was a very well written letter and showed how Rabbi Nussbaum was an influence to all around him and knew how to talk about the issues at hand 
in such a way that would constantly engage his listeners.